in a universe populated by monsters, giants, and larger-than-life beings, I was determined to find my own path to the top of the mountain in sports entertainment. I wasn't gifted with superhuman size or strength, but I did have an insatiable thirst to learn, the physical gifts to take to the air, and an uncle who was more than happy to give me the tools needed to become one of the greatest competitors to ever lace up a pair of boots. Starting my career in Mexico, I'd be known first as La Lagartija Verde, which means the green lizard, and Colibri, hummingbird. Still a teenager, I would eventually earn the highest honor from my uncle, as I was officially crowned Rey Misterio Jr. I would take everything I had learned from my uncle and make it all my own. I would bring Lucha Libre to the world stage. I would make cruiserweights as popular as our heavyweight counterparts. And I would prove that a cruiserweight could win it all, as long as they were given the opportunity. I would arrive in America, first stopping in ECW, before garnering the attention from the top people at WCW, who quickly signed me to a contract. With my foot in the door, it was just a matter of time before I took over the world of sports entertainment. Every step, a battle. Every opponent, a new face who felt they were superior to me. Every match, giving me a new objective to strive to meet. Should I try to weaken their legs? Throw all of my aerial techniques at them? Maybe surprise them with some defensive lucha libre? Take it to the outside? Show off my newest move? By the time I got to the ring, I always had a little mental list of things I wanted to try in order to win. And with every victory, I got another reminder that the best was yet to come. After winning WCW's Cruiserweight Championship, Cruiserweight Tag Team Championship, and the World Tag Team Championship, I would finally head to WWE to further build my legacy. In the near 20 years since I debuted in WWE, I have become known as quite simply the greatest luchador in sports entertainment history, the greatest mass superstar of all time. Ray is the king. Having competed against every big name possible and having defeated nearly everyone that stepped in my way. Not every road is paved with gold and mine was no different. But even when the road gets challenging, there's always opportunity. The opportunity to learn from mistakes to grow as a competitor and to get better. I may not have had my hand raised every time out, but there's never been a time where I didn't leave the ring better than when I entered. The memories behind the infamous match of Halloween Havoc 1997, which I truly believe is a match that put me on the map, I was a big fan of Eddie growing up, so to be able to forward all these years and then eventually share the ring with him was incredible. It was an honor for me to face one of the Guerreros. Overall, that match was highly important for me. The fact that I could become Cruiserweight Champion that night and defend my mask, not have to be unmasked. You know, that was something that was really in the back of my mind. I just didn't want to go through that. They were trying to take off every luchador's mask one by one, and I was on the list. So you could only imagine the stress that had built up. And for us, luchadores, it's a very prized possession. You know, this is something that I've carried since 1992. We both know, Eddie and I, what the mask means to us that carry it. So he knew what was at stake. I would never give him the satisfaction of taking my mask, never. I've sat and watched that match. I actually watched it not too long ago with my son, Dominic. And it's a match that I still learn from. And you know, it's a match that doesn't get old. I truly believe that if there was no Eddie Guerrero, my career would have gone a different direction. Eight years after our epic Halloween Havoc clash, Eddie and I were on better terms, but still found ourselves unable to resist the friendly competition in WWE. Holding the WWE Tag Team Championships only drove us to wonder who the better man on the team was. We both held victories over the other, but the chance to meet at the showcase of the Immortals, WrestleMania, 
was something we couldn't pass up. For the first time ever, two tag team champions would go one on one at the grandest stage of them all. We both knew what this match meant to the other, and it's what made it so fun to go out there and try to take the glory for ourselves. With no hard feelings, of course. Eddie Guerrero has passed away. Eddie was in the prime of his life, 38 years old, the prime of his career. So tonight, we celebrate the life of Eddie Guerrero. The toughest thing about this day was what we were all living, what we were going through. It was hard for us to accept that Eddie was no longer with us. Everyone was hurting. I asked myself, what would Eddie have done? And Eddie was all about the business. Whatever happened, show must go on. I did expect to wrestle Sean one day, just not under those terms. One of the greatest legends in WWE history, he has a lot of respect for this business and for the superstars that are up and coming. By Shawn Michaels asking me if, if I had the energy and the courage to have a match against him that night, he didn't have to choose me, but he did because he knew that Eddie would have loved it. That speaks of the type of human being that he is. Losing Eddie was one of the most painful experiences in both my personal and professional life. The WWE Universe came together to pay tribute to one of the most respected and beloved superstars of all time. This was a difficult night for all of the obvious reasons, but we wanted to put on a show that Eddie would be proud of. I found myself in a rare one-on-one -on -one match with another living legend, the heartbreak kid, Shawn Michaels. Of course, I wanted to win for myself, for my fans, and for Eddie. And while Shawn was also grieving, I knew that he would still give me everything he had, just as Eddie would have wanted. I believe defending a championship is way harder than becoming a champion. There's always more pressure defending, keeping that title that you work hard to get anyone whoever wants to become champion they just want to destroy you they want to take what's yours and with a guy like jake bl he just wants to destroy you but he would always nag and put you down he would step on you and step on you Amigo. crush you down and just make you feel this big being the smallest superstar in that ring facing giants in a world of giants that was my fuel to overcome every time I step into the ring with him. I had finally reached the pinnacle of WWE by winning the World Heavyweight Championship at WrestleMania in honor of my good friend, Eddie Guerrero. As a World Heavyweight Champion, I knew I had a target on my back and would face some of my toughest opponents, including John Bradshaw Layfield. JBL always made it very easy to get motivated for a match. His loud mouth, the constant mockery, and his knack for crossing the line to make things personal. He didn't think I was a real champion. He thought I'd just be a stepping stone to his reign as a dual champion. Went into Judgment Day, ready to show him that all his bluster and power wasn't enough to stop Rey Mysterio. The Big Red Machine came, had his sight set on eliminating me from WWE in 2008. The monstrous seven-foot-tall behemoth took pleasure in mocking my pain and misery. Kane thought he could use his mind games to break me, but I wasn't gonna let that happen. It's tough keeping your head in the game when facing someone so sick and sadistic, but at Cyber Sunday, where the WWE Universe would choose our match stipulation, the fans chose no holds barred. I didn't know what type of strategy I was gonna bring to the table that night. My technique has always been Aerial maneuvers. Was I gonna be able to get away with it at an old holds barred match? I made a promise to myself that I wasn't going to show fear. How do I take the big man down? Hit him with whatever I got. I was gonna meet him head on, regardless of the match type, and show him that you can't break Rey Mysterio. When I became Intercontinental Champion, I was honored to hold the title with such a vast legacy of greatness. I was excited to face new challengers as the landscape was evolving. 
a brash newcomer named Dolph Ziegler thought he had me figured out and brushed me to the side. My point of view of Dolph Ziegler coming in, I had the utmost respect for him. He was very exciting to watch. He had a style, but with a new spike to it, a new feel to it. I knew Dolph was hungry coming into this match, and he was one of the up-and-coming superstars. But there's a mistake that he made that you never make in this business. Dolph felt like he was already the Intercontinental Champion before our match had even started. So I made sure to teach him a very valuable lesson at the biggest party of the summer. At SummerSlam, Dolph's arrogance was going to be his downfall if I had my way. Bragging rights for the World Heavyweight title was every man for himself. I would have thought that Batista would have known that walking into that match. Ray, I'm gonna rip your head off. I'm no stranger to betrayal. Throughout my career, I had people that I thought were friends end up turning their backs on me. But this one, for some reason, it hit a very soft spot. I couldn't make sense of what had gone down. You're supposed to be my friend! If I would have known that this was gonna interfere in our friendship, I would have never have done what I did. We had gone through so much together, and I just couldn't believe how quickly he could throw that all away. I'm not thinking about what we've been through. I'm not thinking about you. I'm thinking about me. After weeks of verbal and physical assaults, I knew that we could never go back to the way things were. I wanted to make him feel the same way I did, to return that feeling to him. And the best way I could think to do that was to beat him on SmackDown and get the number one contender spot that Batista felt belonged to him. After dealing with Batista, I felt like I was at the top of my career. I was a number one contender. The Undertaker is unlike any other opponent. Rey Mysterio, your courage unquestionable, but make no mistake about it. I will show you no mercy. I went into the 2010 Royal Rumble fully believing in myself, confident that I could defeat him. I knew I had the speed advantage, and that if I could maybe take out a leg or catch him with something unexpected, I had a chance. It's not just the size of the dog in the fight, but the size of the fight in the dog, right? Well, this dog had just found himself in the yard of the top dog, the Phenom. It would take everything I had to avoid ending the night resting in peace. With the WWE Championship controversially vacated in the summer of 2011, I fought and clawed to the finals of the WWE title tournament with my opponent, The Miz. Had to face three different opponents to get to the top of the tournament. Dolph Ziggler, R-Truth, and then The Miz. I hate The Miz inside that ring, because he's very dangerous. He'll do anything to win. Maybe we weren't in the middle of a huge personal rivalry, but there was no chance I was going to let The Miz stand in my way of finally winning the WWE Championship. With an opponent as tricky as he is, I had to be ready for anything. Every time you face him, you just don't know what he's gonna come up with to try to steal one from you, which can make the whole pace of the match feel fast and chaotic. But I thrive in that environment, and that night, I was going to use every bit of my experience to get that victory. After a short time away, I finally returned home to WWE and was looking to make an impact and found myself in the crosshairs of the Samoan submission machine, Samoa Joe. I believe Samoa Joe is very dangerous in many qualities in this game. He's strong, he's fast, his submissions are incredible. I felt all of those three and more every time I faced him. Each time we met, it felt like he found a new body part to target. Aside from being ruthless, Samoa Joe is one of the most intelligent competitors you will ever see inside of a ring. Samoa Joe is relentless, and I'm mad enough to admit that he got the best of me at WrestleMania. If you thought what I did to you at WrestleMania was bad, all Ray, tonight will make that pale in comparison. I wasn't going to let him derail my WWE return so soon. With the chance to battle him again on Raw, 
I knew that if I could dig deep and avoid his devastating blows, I had a chance. Which, against Joe, is all you can really ask for. Throughout my career, I competed against the best luchadors on the planet, and I owned victories over them all. The greatest mass superstar in WWE history. The chance to take on another Lucha Libre master in Gran Metallic was something that got me very excited. Competing against another luchador, it motivates me. It inspires me to learn from the new generation, and I have something to teach them as well. This guy right here, Gran Metallic, at one time, was watching me on TV and said, I want to do that. And look at him now, one of the best. He's the king of the ropes. Metalik loves to fly. It's a different style of high flying. It's a different control. This generation has something new under their sleeve, and you have to respect that. The heritage and culture of Luce Libre in great hands here. When I had the opportunity to face Gran Metalik, I knew these were deep roots. We were going back to where I began. I was so excited to give the WWE Universe a taste of true lucha libre and knew this was a dream match that they couldn't afford to miss. Rivalries in WWE often go beyond pride or championships and turn personal. With that said, I never felt a more personal, bitter, and gruesome rivalry than I did with Seth Rollins. The Messiah and his disciple Murphy attacked my livelihood and targeted my eye. That particular attack was unexpected. Once they took that, they targeted my family and brutalized my son, Dominic. For months, our intense rivalry continued to escalate and I knew it was coming to a head. I desperately wanted revenge. At payback, we were going to show Seth and Murphy that they picked on the wrong family to mess with, and we were going to return all the pain they'd put on us. And to my pride, Dominic was going to show me that he was more than capable of standing on his own. I was surprised as much as the WWE Universe with his ability to perform wrestling against Seth Rollins at SummerSlam for the first time. That was his first match ever, and he'd done moves he had never done before. Positioning, timing, that all takes years to learn, and he managed to pick up on it in one night, teaming with my son for the first time. I felt like I was flying higher than any West Coast pop. We were going to overwhelm them from the start. Nothing was going to stop the Mysterio family that night. Nothing. When I first started